Thank you for being here, those who are, uh, who are in the building, and thank you as well to those who are joining us online. So I always have a lot of announcements. I do think this is maybe the most I've, I've ever had, actually. So, so I've got a bunch to say. I'll try to be quick. First, today is we're, we're near St. Francis's Day. St. Francis's Day is October 4, and so the, the main part, of you'll see that in the service, is for the collect, for the prayer we do at the beginning, we'll do one that was written by St. Francis, and that's instead of the collect that's there on your insert. So... So no, that'll be happening as a part of the service. Also, Terry's preaching, which is uh, a, a really wonderful thing for me, and it's a good sermon. Uh, after church, we will have the women's book group is going to meet in the community room, right? That's going to be at 1115. Also, others of us will go to Church Without Walls at, uh, at 12 over at the parish cover. So that's all today. Uh, second thing, in your bulletin, you have an insert, and it's for the United Thank Offering. And so I think... Many of you will know what the United Thank Offering is, but there is a description of it there on the, uh, the insert. So what happens is we make whatever donations we make as a sign of our gratitude to God, and those get pooled. We will take that over to Diocesan Convention, which is on, um, I don't know, it's beginning of November, I think. But anyway, it's coming up in a month or so. And uh, we take that, all the churches do it. The diocese sends it off to the national church, and then the uh, women's group uses that money to make grants to help folks. Maybe we receive that in our diocese that's around the world as well. So if you'd like to participate in that, you've got some descriptions there and an envelope. You can put the uh, check in there. Uh, you can also, you have to get this in the narthex, but we've got the little blue boxes for those who are used to putting, putting change in, which is kind of a nice thing, especially for kids, actually. So right, that's an insert. On the other side of that, I've been asked to, uh, to announce that the Daughters of the King are uh, inviting new members. So that's for women, and it's, you know, it's for ordinary folk uh, who want to sort of commit to a, a rule of prayer, a prayer practice. So it's a little bit of information about the Daughters of the King on that insert. You can ask me for more information if you want. If you ask me, what I'm going to do is say, why don't you contact the person whose name is listed on the insert, who's Marianna Bauman, who's the head of the Daughters of the King for our uh, area, and who's great. Uh, so that's the insert. Um, you may have noticed when you came in the St. Pauli Shed. We thought that might be here a while ago. It's now arrived. It's sort of back in that corner of the, on, the, on the parking lot. That's for gently used clothes and some other stuff that's clothes-like. And there's a list of the kinds of things that can go in the shed, both on the shed itself and we have in the narthex. You're supposed to put it in a bag, and, and we will get a small chunk of sort of however, you know, based on how many pounds they take away, we get a little bit of, uh, of money for that too, and then the, the things get reused, which is great. So that's back there. That's the shed. Um, looking ahead, this Tuesday we have our veterans lunch. That's at 1130, so please get the word out. You yourself, or veterans you know, eat for free. And if you'd like to come help, you're welcome to join us. At, uh, that's at 11.30 on Tuesday. Next Saturday, we're having a river cleanup, or rather, there is a river cleanup in which we will participate. Mary and Jim are kind of leading that for us. I'm thinking a group of us will meet here at St. David's at some point. The whole thing goes from, I think, 8 to 1, and we may not do quite all those hours. So we'll have to figure out exactly when we meet. Uh oh that's better as far as I'm concerned. So maybe it's 9 to 1 uh, as the time. So at any rate, if you're interested, please let them know or me know, and uh, we can coordinate when we want to meet. And uh, last thing, uh, at least, oh, second to last thing for me, on Tuesday, October 18th, so that's a 
few weeks away still. We're going to host clergy day here. That's when the clergy of the diocese gather. Mostly folks from the diocese take care of everything, but if any of you, we could use one or two people perhaps to, um, to help serve coffee, especially at the beginning of the day, or to, uh, to help clean up after lunch at the, you know, a little after lunchtime. Actually, Terry's wife, Lainey, turns out to be in, in charge of all that. But, so if, if you think you could help, if you let me know, or uh, maybe you could let him know and pass it on to Lainey. It's an alternative. And uh, then the last thing for the Holiday Bazaar, there's some information in the, um, in the narthex about the bazaar, which is November 19, so it's still a little ways away. But if you spoke to Sue about having a table, we need to now nail all that down. And so there's a little form out there. So if you did speak to her, please confirm it by filling out this form and getting the form into her hands somehow. And what's the best way to get that into your hands? Just to, I mean, so you can just stick it on the desk in the office. And, oh, yeah, so it's right there on that table. So they're on the table right there next to Kim. Ah, all right, other things to say before we begin? Oh, Mary? Yeah, let me repeat that. So, so the river cleanup, we can come and go as we want. So nobody has to commit to, uh, to the whole morning if that's not something that works for you. Other things? Bob? Yes, uh, two weeks from yesterday, October 15th, we'll have a fall workday to clean up the grounds and inside the church for the preparation of the holidays. Yeah, so again, let me repeat. Thanks, Bob, for that reminder. So we'll have our fall workday Saturday the 15th. So a couple of weeks away, and uh, and is, is there a sign up thing out there? And okay, so there'll be a sign up sheet in the narthex, also a place to suggest tasks for us to take on. Sorry, and then somebody, Ellen. Yes, I'm just uh, back to the bazaar. Mm -hmm. I am accepting uh, donations for baskets. Anything new? Okay. That All right, everybody got that. Baskets. So if you have got a donation for baskets for, for the raffles, raffles, for the raffles, then uh, then please see Ellen. Other things. All right, let's do church. So our service will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your bright blue song books to number 193. 193 in the bright blue song books. <clears throat> Dwell in dark. 
Our service this morning continues, I think, on the screen and on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together the Collect for Purity at the bottom of page 355. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the praise song. Again in the bright blue songbook, number 95. We continue with the collect written by St. Francis. So the Lord be with you. And the collect is on, I think, the screen. So let us pray together. You are holy, Lord, the only God, and your deeds are wonderful. You are strong. You are great. You are the Most High. You are Almighty. You, Holy Father, are King of heaven and earth. You are three and one. Lord God, all good. You are good, all good, supreme good. Lord God, living and true. You are love, you are wisdom, you are humility, you are endurance. You are rest, you are peace, you are joy and gladness, you are justice and moderation. You are all our riches and you suffice for us. You are beauty. You are gentleness. You are our protector. You are our guardian and defender. You are our courage. You are our haven and our hope. You are our faith, our great consolation. You are our eternal life, great and wonderful Lord, God Almighty, merciful Savior. And now please be seated for the readings. Our first reading today is from Lamentations, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate. Her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters. 
her enemies prosper, because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags. They find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 137 from the Book of Common Prayer. We will say this responsibly by full verse. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. As for our harps, we hung them up on the trees in the midst of that land. For those who led us away captive asked us for a song, and our oppressors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song upon an alien soil? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue plead to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember the day of Jerusalem, O Lord, against the people of Edom, who said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy shall be he, happy shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Our second reading today is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. The sequence hymn can be found in your dark blue hymnals, number 558. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. In spite of dungeon fire 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, I'd like to uh, just refresh your memory in case any of you were sleeping while Carol was doing the readings. Um, and I'm going to sway off of the, um, the norm. We typically talk about the gospel, and today we're not going to do that. Now, it's some kind of rule someplace that I could probably be fired for not speaking about the gospel, um, but just defending my own turf last week if everybody remembers father harvey did not talk about the gospel either <laughs> he talked about jeremiah so if you're going to take me down he's got to come too <laughs> so I, I i um i wanted to talk about second timothy for a second for a little bit and again if you were sleeping here's what i want to re re um, highlight it says I'm grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. So that's the backdrop. I couldn't help but talk about this today over the gospel. In this morning's epistle from a prison in Rome, the Apostle Paul is writing a personal letter to Timothy, where soon Paul would be executed in Rome, in that prison, for his faith. As Paul suffered in prison, we should remember these words not from the ink from which they were written, but from Paul's blood as he sat and awaited his execution because of his faith. This letter is personal. It's to one person, Timothy, which is different than most of our Sunday readings. The readings that we usually share are written to a community, a group of people. This one is different. It's personal. So as Paul's waiting his execution, what do you think possibly could have been going through his mind to write a letter to young Timothy? Could it have been that they had such a close relationship? You see, Timothy had accompanied Paul on several missionary journeys, and Paul also sent Timothy out on his own on missionary journeys. Could it have been that Paul thought it was so important to hand down the faith that he took time to talk to Timothy about how important that very was. Most of us know the background of Paul. He was the guy that tormented Christians, became blind, and then became a disciple of Jesus. Here's some background on Timothy. Timothy came from a mixed marriage. His father was Greek. His mother, Eunice, was a Jewish Christian and his grandmother Lois was a Jew turned Christian. Before we go any farther, I gotta ask us a question. There's gonna be three questions today, so be ready. 
Um, first question. How did you acquire your faith? Did you wake up one morning and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be a Christian. And I'm really, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be an Episcopalian. And I'm, I'm going to have faith. Or did you possibly have a life-changing event that you made you think about there's more to life than what I see? Or did you have a mentor? Maybe your mother, father, grandmother, aunt, uncle, grandparent, friend, teacher, who shared his or her faith with you. And again, I chose this scripture today instead of the gospel because I think it's so important that we hand down our faith. And being so close to the start of Sunday school, I wanted to think about what we do here as a community, what we say and how we hand down our faith to our young people here at St. David's, so that they too will have faith, much like young Timothy. In verse 5, like I just read, Paul said, I know that you sincerely trust in the Lord, for you have the faith of your mother Eunice and your grandmother Lois. Through this reading, we can see clearly where Timothy got his faith. He got it from his grandmother and his mother. How did they do that? Did they read scripture to him all the time? Did they pray and teach him how to pray? Did they have gracious hearts towards others, serving those in needs, sharing that with them? We can only speculate on it, but it would seem reasonable to assume that it was a combination of all of those things. Question number two. How do we, slash you, share your faith with your children and grandchildren? Next piece of that is, do you? Everything needs a foundation. A house needs a foundation where it's going to collapse. Bridge needs foundation, pillars, or it's going to collapse. You need to have a base behind the paint or that'll peel off. Everything needs a foundation. Going to Sunday school is a great part of the foundation. As our kids make friends, arts and crafts, have fun parties, fellowship, they learn some scripture, how to pray and play with others. But I would call that interior structure. It's kind of like putting the curtains in the window, but not the foundation. It's icing on the cake. The true foundation our kids need comes from each and every one of us as individuals. As our children's mentors, we need to share our Christian journey with them. We need to be transparent on how God affects our daily lives so that they will have the courage to share with others. It's our responsibility to teach them that serving others is an important part of our Christian journey. It's our responsibility to show them love so that they too will show love. Paul tells Timothy not to be ashamed to tell others about the Lord. You know, we want so much for our young people. We want them to succeed in life we want them to be happy. We buy them almost everything they ask for that we can afford to make them happy. So why is it so hard for some of us to hand down our faith to the most important people in our lives? I can remember as a young kid going to Catholic Mass at the Irish Church in North Adams with my Aunt Mary. The church was one of those huge old Gothic churches and I can remember being mystified by the grandeur of the building and the awe of the whole thing, incense. I can remember wearing my clip-on tie and my soft hat. I can also remember as a young kid going to the Catholic Mass across town at the Italian church with my Aunt Lola and my Uncle Carl. Now, they were both Eucharistic ministers. You know, I was the size of Anthony. And I thought they were like gods, you know, like big shots. No, 
because some people it goes right to their head. You, you know, you know. <laughs> so, so, anyways, um, I remember going to church with Aunt Lola and Uncle Carl. I can remember as a young kid and as a teenager going to Catholic Mass on Sundays with my mother, father, and sister, where I attended catechism. I have been blessed with loving people who understood the importance of handing down their faith in the best ways that they knew how. And I must admit that I didn't really understand or know at times what I was participating in, nor what I was supposed to believe. But I got the foundation. Somebody poured the foundation. As I grew up, I had always prayed. As a young person, I prayed that God would bless me, Terry. Have a good hockey game. Give me, give me this, give me that. And I prayed for my family, my family circle. But as you grow in your Christian faith, my prayers had continued to change. What was once focused on myself has now been about all other people. It's not about me anymore. It's about everybody else. The people that I don't know about, the people I hear and read about who are facing struggles in life, the people of the Ukraine, Russia, Afghanistan, through no fault of their own are suffering. The people who suffer from diseases such as COVID and anything else that may be alien. People that are sick. I pray for each of you every day, my church family, that God blesses you in your daily lives. I'm forever grateful for those in my young adult life that taught me about faith and gave me a foundation. Question number three. Who do you have to be thankful for for handing down their faith to you? There has to be somebody that just clicked. Give thanks for them today. We're so grateful to our Sunday school teachers who take time out of their lives to hand down their faith in teaching our young people here at St. David's. These teachers may be the folks that our children and grandchildren will one day remember as the people who poured the foundation of their faith. And so I don't get in any kind of trouble from the big shot in the front. I'm gonna talk real quick about the gospel. I could get fired. In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells us that you have the faith of a mustard seed, the smallest tree in the garden, you can move mountains. Jesus is telling us that faith of any size can be life-changing. And Jesus says that when we obey him, we're doing our duty. So each of us needs to do our duty. And now as Episcopalians, and when we had young people and in our baptismal rites, we made some promises. Let me refresh your memory. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? And we all answered, we will. Will you strive by your prayers and witness, will, excuse me, will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full statue of Christ? And we all said, yes. We need to remember the promises we made. It's important to hand down our faith for those who come after us. So I remind us, do not be ashamed of your faith. Do not be afraid to show how God has made a difference in your life with our young people. Our words in sharing prayer, our actions in showing love and compassion, and our service to others is part of handing down our faith. One final note I forgot to tell you. Timothy, that let, that, um, the recipient of this letter, Timothy became the first bishop of Ephesus. Amazing how that happened. Somebody handed down their faith, and it 
may have made a difference. So, I think about this as all the kids go off into Sunday school. Maybe we have a future bishop in our midst and we don't know it. But even if we don't have a bishop, we have loving and caring, humble children of God. Amen. I'm thinking we ought to go ahead and keep him around. <laughs> so now please stand as you're able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and also on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. Today we will use the, uh, for prayers of the people, form two in the Book of Common Prayer on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishop, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Today, we pray for the Church of the Reconciliation in Webster, the spiritual life of the people, the Episcopal Church Building Fund, covenant relationship with Diocese of Kumasi, Ghana. Pray for the Church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, including on our world prayer list, Andorra and Angola, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. I ask your prayers for the people on our prayer list. And today, we pray for the nun, Foley, Hannah, and extended Lefebvre families for comfort in their grief, Maddie and her family in her struggle with cancer, the Hansons for recovery and strength, Jude for healing, Benjamin and Salem for full recovery, Brendan for miracle healing, Brittany for healing of brain cancer, Joe and Cynthia for relief from pain, Louis and Michael for peace, Anne for strength, Madeline and Alicia for healing and strength, 
Ted, Bob, Jude, and Colin for good help, Elaine, Janet, Steve, and Dick for successful cancer treatment, Tom for healing in his marriage, for the Khan family, the two Lewis families, the Ukrainian people, and all victims of violence. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for our 2022 St. David's Parish Prayer Cycle, our Office Angels, the Barnas, Pam Bassett, the Baton, Beauregard, and Bulici families. I ask your thanksgivings for the spiffy lines in our parking lot. I guess they were done anonymously because there's no name there. The women's book group and all supporters of Church Without Walls. I also ask for your thanksgivings for the flowers adorning our altar today which are giving in loving memory of John Kupek from Lynn and John Litchfield. The sanctuary candle is given to the glory of God. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning in our prayer book to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess Confess that we have have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the the glory glory of your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also so let us greet one another in peace. Peace to the Wolos family, to Paul and Kim, to the O'Hares, to the Duttons. <coughs> peace to everybody in the back. Peace to Lynn. And after you've had a chance to wave it, folks, please have a seat while Terry sets the table.
Our service continues. Well, before we get to the Eucharistic prayers, I do know that we have at least a couple of anniversaries to pray over. So we have Valerie and Roger, who are having their 61st wedding anniversary. And the O'Hares are having their 24th wedding anniversary. So are there other uh, anniversaries to pray over as well? And, and the Hurlbuts are having an anniversary. What, what, are you, what is it for you? It's been 44 glorious years. 44 glorious years. <laughs> so that's right. Not just any years. So. so let us pray the anniversary prayer, which is uh, probably on the screen, and which is on page 431 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other, in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. How about any birthdays to pray over this week? We've got Michelle. So, we got, so and, and Lynn. All right. Oh, the grandson is 15. And we've got Mary back there, it looks like, and actually my brother as well. So we all kind of birthdays to pray over. So, uh, so the birthday prayer also may be on the screen and is on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. So let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, which begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy is the
Please kneel or sit as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Pat, would you mind coming forward? Pat, in the name of God and of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts to Susan Curtin, that the one to whom you go may share with us in the holy communion of Christ's body and blood. May we who are many be one body, because we all share the one bread and the one cup. Amen. Thank you. And now please stand as you're able, and let us pray together the post-communion prayer on page 366 mm -hmm. in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. 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 Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 529. 529.